to what people need to it do. Was just, it was just something in terms of you know upper management, well, not, just, not understanding. Yes. What people need to do, I feel, is put their foot down and say, "This is what we're doing. Yeah. We're doing it this way, yeah. and this is what's right because we know our fans like it. It's sold before. This is what works." You know, sorry, parent company, but you need to listen to us. And if you don't like it, get go buy. Yeah, take your money and go. We're doing it this way because the fans want it this way. Yeah. You know, I know what we talked. And that's about. not easy to do, but you, it has to be done. It has to. There, there's no. The game industry is suffering because of stuff like this, and it needs to stop. Okay. We're back. How you doing? Um, we're back with our, what is this, our fifth video? Yeah, it's our fifth video. Gonna be enjoying these so far. I'm gonna try different upload times, because the last upload, we went from 71 views to zero. Yeah, it makes no sense. I've never seen a video get zero views. I've never seen so, that. Um, that was weird. I think we're gonna do it a little bit later in the day. Yeah, because when, usually when we upload around 7 o'clock is when people put... Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about something that's a little bit similar to what we talked about yesterday, the gaming industry and yeah. how it's suffering. Yeah. And I want to get into something that's a little alarming and kind of... It, it's sad for a lot of the people that want to go into the gaming industry. Yeah, almost yeah. adding into the apocalypse type it, it thing is. that you, we talked about yesterday. It is. I mean, this might be, as a matter of fact, this might be even more detrimental to the gaming community than what we read yesterday. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I wanted to research this more. We're talking about crunch time today. And... Uh, you know, it's basically it's well, the the deadlines that these bigger companies it's, it's are not putting even on that, these guys. It's not even that. It's not the deadlines. It's what I want to go into. It's it. Well, I'm going to get into it. It's so we're going to talk about crunch time today. We're going to talk about bad business practices, and we're going to talk about the main problem. And the main problem, you'll see a theme is just poor management. Yeah. And these giant corporations. Yep. Buying out these smaller companies and running them like sweatshops. Yeah. Um, and that gets into crunch time and how they're forcing workers to jump so, around to different. Some of these hours are so ridiculous. I, I don't even. Anyway, we're going to get into it. So let's, let's get, get into it. That's a rundown. Let's get into that. Um, before we start the video, I do want to ask you to leave a like and subscribe, please. Um, it helps the channel out yeah. tremendously. So let's let's get into the first article we got. The first article. Yeah. Um, how Crunch Affects Game Developers uh, by di Digital Trends. Um, it goes into why, like, why are they, it asks the question, why are game studios run like sweatshops and the human, the, the toll of crunch time on these people? Because these are people. Yeah. I mean, you have to remember, and they're not being treated like people. Um, and that's just the title of the no, article. They're being treated like machines, almost. Yes. And, and you know what's sad? is a lot of these people, a lot of these workers are being contracted Yeah. and then they're being thrown around like they're just disposable objects. Yep. And Polygon has an article on that too that I'm going to talk about, but you know, the human toll of crunch time, and, and this talks about Red Dead Redemption too, which this really surprises me. Maybe it shouldn't, I know Rockstar is a big game company and I love Red Dead Redemption too, but yeah. I guess they were even having problems at Rockstar Studios. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, it goes on to talk about Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, will be the biggest, most ambitious game from Rockstar to date when it's released on October 26th. But it's an achievement that comes at a cost. In an interview with Vulture, studio co-founder Dan Hauser talked about the game's development, a process that's taken over seven years, so it's a long time. It's been in development for a long you know, time. No, and... and while, seeing, while GTA 5 was going on. I was going to say, seeing how long it's been in development, Surprise me even more about the working conditions. See, we don't even hear about when it goes into development. No, no, because they took their time with it, so that it made it even more surprising that people were being that were being made to do stuff like this. It's resulted in hundreds of thousands of animation dialogue lines in a 60-hour-long story. Hauser also disclosed that in the final stages, we were working 100-hour weeks, which is I, I, I was that's trying to add that up in my head, and I can't even. I can't 40 hour weeks. That's eight hours a day for five days. Yeah. So multiply that times two. Plus that's some. sixteen hours in five days. So let's spread that out for weekends. You, you had maybe sixteen hours on those two weekends. So so let's say they're working about fifteen hours a day 
including weekends. We're, we're, we're including weekends. I don't know if they did. Yeah. But 15-hour days, James, that's no sleep. No, none. That, that means you sleep, you get up, you go, you that, do the game, and then you go back to sleep. That means you sleep for like five hours. You may sleep in your office. As I, mean, I was getting ready to say, as a matter of fact, they might have been sleeping in the, in the play, you know, in their building. And we're not even describing what kind of toll this takes on families. No, yeah, especially, yeah, if you have a family. And health, stress. I mean, just... Because you know they were stressed if they were, you know, crunching that time that much to get it done. Now, it does go on to say, while well, he later clarified that the strenuous work period only lasted for three weeks and involved just the senior writing team. This... Here's the scary part, though. This is the tame version of what some of these studios are forcing yeah, the Yeah, yeah, this is do. the tame part of it, yeah. But, I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. 100 hour weeks, I mean, that's... I feel for these people. And a quote here by someone, I think somebody that worked, we are all told if we didn't stay late, then we were naturally selecting ourselves. Basically, and this is what I talked to you last night. Yeah, you talked to me If they this. didn't do this, because they were expected to, if they didn't do this, they were basically lining themselves up, basically in a fire squad of firing. Yeah. And that's, working overtime or crunch, as it's more commonly called, has been part of the gaming industry for years. It's been going on for a long time. It's usually a result of fast approaching deadlines on ambitious projects that don't have enough people working on them. The most intense periods typically occur during the months prior to the game's release and depending on where a studio is located or the type of time contract developers are in, overtime may not be paid. So they may be working 100 hour weeks and not even getting How do you find motivation to come in? You don't. If I was working 100 hour weeks, I'd be like, screw it, dude. They're doing it for two reasons because they love it or they have to have the job because they have families to support. It's one of those two. If I was somebody out of college and I was doing this and I wasn't getting paid for overtime and working 100 hour weeks, I'd look at it and go, what? screw this, I'm going yeah. to something else. Yeah. And you know, something that's kind of around the same realm as this, you noticed, especially within the last 10 years, you'll see these video game companies and you'll, you'll see them start to branch off. And you'll have certain companies in certain cities around the world. And I always thought that was a mistake because then you start spreading your employees. Yes, thin. and that's a point. And, yes. and that's, BioWare that's something having, I've never liked. BioWare is having a big problem with that. It, it, developers forced to crunch end up sacrificing weekends, time with their families, and their personal health in the process, what we just talked about. Yeah. <coughs> and, while, excuse me, and while speaking up may seem like the obvious solution, it's a topic that's difficult for people in the game industry to talk about openly as it can affect their current or future job opportunities. It's, I, I don't know. I still go back to them spreading the businesses out and, and spreading the employees to them. That's the main thing. That, that, that's the main part of this. If you had everybody within a certain company working on one title, stuff like this wouldn't have to happen. One of the developers talked about after a week, a after a few weeks, I wasn't able to eat, sleep, or function. Yeah. And here's one quote that's just predicted. It just so happened that one of the company's directors decided to walk around the studio and found a room was empty. It was around 7 p.m. at night, Byron says. The next day we were all taken to the meeting room and were told if we didn't stay late, we were naturally selecting ourselves, which simply means we would be fired. It was 7 p.m. Yeah, I know. I, I understand in some businesses, sometimes you have to work late. Sometimes yeah. there are deadlines you have to meet. Sometimes there are crunch periods. Yeah. I understand that. But there were some game companies, we're getting ready to talk about Fortnite, Epic Games, and Bioware, and Anthem, and just, it's becoming a trend, Yeah. and that's not good. Certain times, understandable. Yeah. Three weeks, okay, you can argue, man, crunch time is here, this is ridiculous, this time, man, this sucks. Kind of like finals week in and college. And it's almost like you know what's coming up. You know what's coming, and you know what you're getting into, you know what you're signing up for. Yeah. But when it becomes a habit... Yeah, all and the time. The industry becomes habit forming. Mm -hmm. It becomes degrading and it becomes the industry just starts to crumble. So this just adds on to what we talked about yesterday. You know what? Well, I'll let you keep going. There was a quote I saw. It might have been a little bit further down from where you are. It's the full quote of the of the man who said he wasn't able to eat, sleep, or function. And it makes it sad. This full quote. I mean, just go ahead and go into it. He, was, he said, you'd leave at 7 a.m., get home at 11 p.m., Every day, weeks on end. After a few weeks, I wasn't able to eat, sleep, or function, which was his original quote. Now, he goes on to say, I spent lunch, lunch breaks in my car, either trying to nap or crying. That's how stressed out this guy was. If you're, if, you're working, if you're working in a job, and I've worked at jobs like that, 
where I felt that bad. Yeah. And he, you know, it's kind of like what I said. There's two reasons you would stay if that was going on, because you either loved it or you had a family to support. And he goes on to say, but I wanted to work in video games. That's you, his dream. You know, when I was a teacher, the only reason why I quit doing that is because I could. Yeah. There were people there, and I'm not going to name any names. That but aren't able to. There were people when I was working that would say, they, they had a family, and a lot of these were young women, so I felt bad for them because they felt like they had to do this. Yeah. And some of them were pregnant. Some yeah. of them had kids on the way, which is what pregnant is. Some of them already had kids. And some of them just got married. Yeah. And, you know, they had a home they had to pay for. And they were th saying to themselves, you know, there were times where I thought I didn't want to do this, and I forced myself to do it, and I'd just break down crying because I was just so miserable, and I would go home at night not being able to sleep. I don't want any human to ever feel like that anything they're doing. No. If it's just a couple of times, like, oh, man, I'm so stressed just out. Just one day, and it was like just a tough day. And then you, you get over it. Yeah. Whatever. But if it's a trending yeah, thing. This guy was saying it was every day for weeks on end. It's and not he, good. And, like, and he said that his dream was working video games, so he didn't let anyone see it, and he did the work. Like I said, I left because I could. Yeah. You no, know, I always said it, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have a, like a child young because it allows me to be able to do things that I wouldn't be able to do if I had a family. I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, let's go on to Fortnite. This kind of leads into Fortnite and crunch periods and how, and how, uh, you know, Fortnite crunch time, forcing Epic Games employees to work 100 hour weeks by segment next. Like I said, it's becoming, it's starting to seem like it's becoming a trend. Now, the, yeah. the problem with Fortnite is it's so popular. So there is an ongoing competition. And they're constantly updating their game, too. They're constantly adding that, new that's, stuff in. That's what's so hard on them is they're constantly having to do it because yeah. they're so popular. Yeah. They can't take a break because if they do, somebody takes over. Yeah. But guess what? Now that person that takes over is now it's on them then a sweatshop. Yeah. I don't want it to be like that. You know, we've talked about Fortnite, I think, once or twice in our couple of videos we've had out. And their company does it. That's the only game they work on. They take their time on updates. They make the updates bigger. And they'll... Uh, you know something else that they do? Well, uh, what's what's the, the company that does... Fortnite? Epic Games? Epic Games. Yeah, but they have a... No, the company that does for, uh, uh, Warframe. Oh, uh, Digital, digital Extremes, right? Yeah. Something cool they do is they bring their uh the players in and they'll have them create skins and things like that for the game that way they don't have to focus on that they can focus on other updates and then they just release those skins yeah into work, the game. Th that is a good point work with your community and allow yeah. your community to come up with ideas it's a good you. idea um but at the same time these community members also can't write codes true you're not wrong about I that i mean you're not and, and let's look at this article four night success may not be working against the game itself but to actually in the way it is but its employees are still feeling the backlash of it due to a huge amount of Fortnite crunch time. I feel like this is going to take a toll on them after a while. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, are they just firing people and hiring people? Like like cattle? It's yeah, possible. Sources at Epic Games have revealed that employees are on a nearly constant crunch time basis due to the game's updates. Yeah, it's because they have to yeah, to keep the game yeah, rolling. Yeah, they're so close. To, yeah, they have to do it. Because if you think about the style of game it is, it's a battle royale game. It's uh, free to play. So the only thing that's going to keep their game relevant moving forward, well, short of new gameplay type stuff, but that takes time, are new skins and new little tweaks to the game. I mean, they have to do it. They don't have an option. The, the source says that all the contractors and developers at Epic Games have been suffering under a very toxic and stressful environment. They've been getting pressure to put in long hours in order to ensure the game's continued success, even though overtime is supposedly voluntary. But if they don't do it... No, that, that's not that's a trend I've seen is all these companies are saying that. They have to. But, because if they don't, the, the, they're probably afraid the workers are going to unionize. you look at quotes from the workers, that's obviously not true. And then the then the industry comes out and goes, no, we're, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Crunch time, and I always notice these quotes are from people that don't work there anymore. Yeah. Because they can, by then, they're gone anyway, so what does it matter? You know? Or they're anonymous. Yeah. Crunch time has often been discovered to result in a large number of problems, both physically and mentally, with many contractors at Epic and elsewhere reporting various mental and health problems while they're paid extra for their services. That doesn't make it okay. At least at least they're paid at overtime. At least they're getting paid overtime, yeah. Most employees at Epic are feeling the effects of Fortnite crunch time particularly badly, according to the inside sources. 
who have asked to not have their identities you revealed. Just, you just talked about. They forced to work weeks that can extend to 50, 70. Once you get into the 70 range, that's just it starts to get absurd. Yes, yes. Because that's double of a normal work week. That's a double shift. Yeah. Or even 100 hour There's work weeks. hour again. And getting a weekend away from work is seen as a major achievement. So they're even working weekends. So they're working seven days a week. But could you imagine that? That's not even a weekend though, James. You know I'm mentally stressed out. You would go home for the weekend. You know, that's all you could think and about. Yeah, as soon as you were off of work, you'd come home and you'd go, man. Did I and do then, this? Did I do that? Then f well, five minutes later, you'd be going, my God, I have to do this again next week. Mm -hmm. You know, that would almost make it harder. It would. I would rather just work. I would. I would rather just work every day. I mean, it, 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 would, be, it would be so... Uh, you know what I would do? You know what would probably happen? I'd go home that weekend and not come back. That's how miserable I'd be. I, would, I wouldn't come back. It, it, it would be so... Unless I had to, it'd be so, it would be so... And, you know, Fortnite started this. They started the Battle Royale, you know, boom. Well, kind yeah, of. They popularized they it. They popularized is what I'm saying. So what they've done is they've caused these other companies... I wouldn't even say the they popular games. P PUBG was a big one. It was. H H1Z1. They made it mainstream. Yes. Is that the way I, that's, that, that's and then the right that kind of that kind of died off because the updates were bad. It's whatever. Yeah. Some of the updates were awful. But now uh, you got PUBG. Some, now you got some of these other battle royale games, Apex Legends and stuff like that popping up now. That's giving them. And they're. It's yeah. cause it's almost causing them to have these work hours because it's giving them that competition. But that here, they didn't have before. here's what's ridiculous. Apex Legends is like fourth, but they can't keep up with the updates. So they're people are calling it a failure. Yeah. Here's the problem. Dude, you cannot force your workers to work like that continuously. Because they, they, won't, they won't, they'll stop, they'll stop giving full effort. They will. It'll you, just happen. You, you can't do that. And you're fourth behind Fortnite. You're probably, you know, the reason why I know they're fourth is because I've seen other YouTube channels talk about it. Yeah. But I, I know Apex is behind Fortnite, but. Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're still behind them. But I mean, there's more in that competition now than there was before when they first came out. And again, here, just like I said, apparently this is beginning because Fortnite exe executives at Epic Games are wanting to keep Fortnite relevant for as long as popular, as long as po possible. Especially given the large amount of Battle Royale games and game modes that are pop popping up lately, like Apex Legends. Yeah, that's kind of what I was just talking just about. like you talked about. Yeah, I was on there. That's where I saw it on there, and it just... It, so is it good that there's competition? Yeah, from our standpoint it is, because yeah. we can play more games. But we're not developing the games. For some of these people, it's, it's horrible. Now, yeah. we're going to get into one Bioware. An industry, an industry that shows that it's failing. And I said I was going to talk about this one fifth. Hell yeah, no, let's talk about this one next. Which one? Crunch up Bioware contributed to issues with Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. That's the one I want to get into next by Digital Trends. Yeah. Um, this is an industry that I feel like is, is going to go under, and it's sad because I went into the Mass Effect game. It's starting to look like it. I mean, it really is. And I never thought Bioware would go under. It started with EA, and again, that goes into my point at the end. They, they, they've, they've made two, three of my favorite franchises of all time. And it's not just EA. It's what's going on in the gaming industry. Yeah. Um, it, it, Crunch at Bioware contributed issues with Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. Article about Felicia Miranda uh, posted on April 2nd this year. Everybody knows about Anthem. Um, its struggles are part of a much bigger problem. Again, this has to do with poor development, crunch time, game development, poor, bad business practice. Developers came forward to the publication under the promise of anonymity, again, to detail the terrible work conditions that contributed to issues behind the studio's latest sci-fi shooter as well as Dragon Age Inquisition and Mass Effect Andromeda. And, you know, if you think about it, the fact that they contributed to those games and it, the, work, the work was this bad, Dragon Age Inquisition was still an unbelievable game. The fact that it was that good, imagine if the work conditions had been good and they had been invested in you the know, game. You know, I'm starting to wonder if some of the endings, why they're so as bad as, bad as what they are. Because people just want to get it done and get I, it over. I'm wondering if they get to the end of the game and they're going, my God, dude, we're at the finish line. That's it. That's yeah, it. We're let's done. Do it. Yeah. That's it. I wonder if they're doing that. It's they may be so miserable that they're going, dude, we're at the end. Just, just kill it. Because just do it. It's because 
the whole game is good, and then you get to that ending of the game. Yeah, it's like it's a reliever. Long. It is. It's it's just like let's just do it and get it done, and that way it's done. And it's over with. It's no secret that the launch of Anthem was rocky, with many reviewers and players saying that it felt like the game was released too soon. Tweets and blog posts from the developers' upper management trying to dispel concerns and criticism of the game, claiming that its issues were mostly a result of Anthem being such a massive online game. But some anonymous insight from developers that worked on the project suggests much, much deeper than that. From the use of EA's controversial frostbite engine to poor direction from upper management unstaffed, understaffed teams, Anthem's developers were subject to work conditions that made them so miserable that many were forced to take doctor-mandated leave for months, with some never returning. These conditions result in several Bioware's most experienced developers leaving as well, Sen uh, like senior staff level. Mm -hmm. And yet this seems to be another case of crunch culture. The same issue we heard about leading up to the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2, according to the report it became a sort of tradition of Bioware for its games to have slow start in development and then rapidly accelerate near the end. So that's the point. It was in development. These games were supposedly in development for, for years. Um, kind of like what I said with Red Dead Redemption 2. It was in development for seven years. Why were you having to do crunch time at the end? Because they're spreading people so thin. They start this development, and it has to do with upper management. You know, there was an article out there, and I, I, I don't have it, but they talked about... And we do. I'll just use EA as an example since we're talking about EA. Yeah. EA is a giant company. Huge. They buy these other companies out, mm -hmm. and then they force them to do these things. Yeah. And they tell them, "Look, we want this done this way. You have to do it this way. We want it done right here now. This way now. This way." And some of these, it, it, it's like it's like they're being micromanaged. Yeah. In so they can't coordinate things right. And the people that are working can't coordinate with their, with the larger companies, the the larger EA co uh, Bioware companies. They're just the the business practices are bad, the management is bad. They're being run poorly, so the crunch time comes up. It's just a, it's a CF, and if you're an adult, you know what that means. Yeah. It's a, just a giant mess. You know, I was gonna say. That's what would make me more mad than anything else with jobs I've worked in the past, some retail jobs. You'd be working there six months. Everything would be going fine. Everything would be fluid, running smoothly. And all of a sudden, one senior manager from corporate would come in one day. We're changing everything. Why everything's fine? Yeah, because Hastings, we want to. Remember Hastings was switched up like but there's, five there's, times? But there's no reason. There's no. It's, it's working fine the way it is. There's no reason to do it. You, you remember when they changed it like three times in one year? Yeah. And we walked in and we, we went, this isn't going to get people to come into your store yeah. changing things up. No. You're just creating added stress and I, over the And I worked there and it was just like... And you would have to stay overnight to restock yeah. the shelves and you change would. things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was just frustrating because it's like, you don't work here every day. You don't know they don't care. what the individual store is like. The manager's doing fine. Just leave it alone. You got a good point with that. Talk about the school board. Yep. They implement new things on these teachers every year. They come in and they just go, oh man. I came up with an idea. My job is relevant now. Yeah. Guess what my job is? Senior staff development entitled book, school worker, textbook worker, management level staff, bus rider, bus transportation, park recreation, job level management title worker. No, you know, the, the, it's ridiculous, but they'll have job titles like that. Yeah, stuff that makes no sense. And, and they'll come in and they'll tell these teachers that they have to do all these new things and the teachers go, wait a minute, I didn't even, f do it now. Yeah. But that doesn't make sense. Do it or you're fired. Do it. You're being evaluated tomorrow. You better do it. And meanwhile, your students are sitting in the classroom while these people are in here talking to you, and you're going, you're ruining my lesson. Do it now. Do it the way we tell you to do it. And then you question, you go, look, this isn't right. This doesn't work. This doesn't fit. And then all of a sudden, you start having people leave, and they go, are these people leaving? They will. They'll ask questions like that. I know. Why are these people leaving? And then, so they start emergency certifying people. Mm -hmm. So they start hiring these contractors. I guess that'd be like emergency certification. And you can people. tell them over and over and over it's not going to work. And they, it's almost they don't like, care. It's not even that they're ignoring you. It's like they just can't hear it. it it's like even beyond them just ignoring the you. The problem is you have people coming up with solutions. And we're going to get into this. That aren't in the get, environment. You have people coming up with solutions that aren't in the environment, don't yeah. care, and they want it done this way because profits say this. 
Well, guess what? In the long run, it doesn't matter if your industry goes under, idiot. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if, if things don't work in the long run. Really, it doesn't. There's, there's, there's no point. Here we go. Bioware quickly released a blog post titled Anthem's Game Development, where an anonymous author came to the studio's defense and claimed that no complaints regarding the crunch culture were brought to their attention. We put a lot of focus on better planning to avoid crunch time, and it was not a major topic in feedback in our internal postmortems. The, the article ended up dismissing the report that included words and criticisms from Bioware's own employees. We don't see the value of tearing down one another or one another's work. We don't believe that articles that that do that making our game industry and craft better. What was that, 27 minutes? 25. <clears throat> if you're a developer that struggles with quotes, it, it, it pretty much says... They're, they're almost... Some of these people act like they're, they're like, it's like a cry for help. It is. It probably is. And we got a lot more to talk about. There's going to be a quick cut here. Yeah, because of the camera. Because of the camera. And then we'll be right back. Yeah. So if you see a cut. Yeah. Sometimes I have to cut anyway, but and we'll be right back. I don't know why I said we'll be right back, because it cuts. Yeah, they won't even notice. They, they won't be right notice. back. We're here. <laughs> I mean, but the next article, it's by Business Insider. So, so we're we're gonna continue with Bioware. We continue with Bioware now because they are they are the big they're the big one right now. And I'll be hundred percent honest. They may be them and EA may be the most disappointing thing in the video game industry to me of all time ever. How far they've gone down, how far they've fallen. It really is. An investigative report on the video game's biggest flop of 2019 tells a familiar story about poor working conditions in the industry. So again, we're talking about Anthem. Um, despite being the best-selling video game of 2019, Anthem suffered through a tumultuous launch and has drawn the ire of players and critics alike. There's an investigative report by Kotaku, and I have several different art articles by Kotaku talking about this. Something I will say before we go on anymore, is regardless of what you think about the media, this is the way investigative journalism is supposed to happen. It's yes, supposed to expose bad things happening in Jason stuff like Schreier, this. I think, has it out for... for fans, but when he does do articles about the gaming industry, he does do a good job. This and is the several, way investigative journalism is supposed to be. And Kotaku and Polygon, I don't know what it is, they do weird social justice stuff. And they'll do really, really good stuff. And then they'll go on and they'll do unbelievable investigative journalism. Yeah. I don't understand. It's almost like they're being, anyway, we're not going to get into all that. It's almost like they're being forced. But anyway, let's get into this. I don't, I don't think they are. I think that, and that just may be their policy, which is fine. If that's what you believe, cool. But but I am glad to bring in stuff like this. Cause stuff like this needs to be exposed. But the, but these articles are unbelievable in what they talk about. And I'm going to go into some stuff about Jason Schreier. He's a big deal in some of the stuff I got. He goes into some stuff that's, we even even got some of the stuff that is... is even and and I didn't read, read I didn't pre-read these articles like you did. So to talk to Jason Schreier report on the working condition at Bioware during Anthem's creation, discovering that employees at Bioware reportedly suffered from intense mental and emotional stress as they struggled to complete their game on schedule. We talked about people crying in their cars, not being able to work, not coming back to work. Yeah. Anthem was very much a different game when the development process began in 2014. The project took on it, it, James. It began in 2014. Yeah. Five so, years. Some people say 2013. I think they talked about it 2013. It started in 2014. Yeah. Anyway. The project took on several different names as Bioware solidified the core elements. So they couldn't even get the name right. It, it was mainly, I, I think it started off as Beyond, and they couldn't get that down. The game officially launched on February 15th with a sliding release schedule and suffered a tumultuous first month. Players reported game-breaking bugs and criticized Anthem's lack of content. Those are the two things you shouldn't have if you're in development that long. No. It, it, to me, that comes from poor management because these people are just doing what they're told. Yeah. A blockbuster budget and aggressive marketing campaign from Electronic Arts helped to make Anthem the best-selling video game of February, but the product is considered a resounding flop in its current form. Here's what happened. Do you remember when the game first came out, and we were talking, we were worried because Warframe, that's our favorite online game. Yeah. And we talked about... And I remember there were several articles written saying this is the Warframe thing that's going to This kill. is the Warframe killer. Yeah. And do you remember when we... When, when you, were, you were concerned about it, and you were like, well, I guess... The heck with Warframe, I guess. And then you stopped and you went. You got on the mic with me and we're playing. Actually, we were playing Warframe that night and you said, 
Well, I guess Warframe is going to become the best game of this year. And I said, what's that? He said, I'm not even worried about Anthem now. I shouldn't even worry about it knowing the EA was doing it. Yeah, that's what you said. I said, why? And you said, well, EA's running it. Over. It's not because it's EA. Well, it is. But the main problem is because... The culture. It, it's the culture. It's yeah. a giant company taking control of, an, of another... It's like a parent company. And EA used to be a good company. Yeah, they used to create their, their good products. Their practice now is... We never care about profits. Screw See, what the fans want. Yeah. We're going to go into what we want. Speaking of, well, speaking of that, there's yeah, an article. It's the very last on. thing at the end. Yeah. Here's what we want. Guess what? We don't even care what the working conditions are like. We want money. Mm -hmm. so greed is what it all comes down to. And, and here's what they come out with. We have to make money to keep our game afloat to make the games good for you. So now they make you feel guilty. Yeah, they make you feel bad for not Look, liking it. Huh? Yeah, we want a good game, but you don't have to come out with two hundred fifty dollars collector's stitches, microtransactions, DLC, 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 DLC. Game sucks. DLC, DLC. You're not even making a good game anymore where people want DLC. What you're doing is you're making a precedent to make DLC to make your game good, and that's where we get angry. Yep. That's what we talked about yesterday. You're making a product bad, and it doesn't have to do with the game industry, really. Well, it does. I'm getting so much stuff in my head. It's not just the game industry is what I'm talking about. It's movies. Yeah, it's, it's comic getting books, into everything. It's music. Yeah. It's video games. All the stuff that people enjoy as an escape is being ruined now. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to create by a society of volatile by, people. By, by several different factors. But I don't I'm mean to get into all cut you off. But no, that's fine. I, I understand what you're saying. Anthem was a very di different game in early stages of development. Technical difficulties report reportedly changed the course of the, the project. Early iterations of Anthem were about surviving the hostile environment of an alien planet. Cool, that sounds cool. The final product focuses more on fighting through enemy encounters and finding increasingly powerful weapons. The development team reportedly ran into technical difficulties that limited the scope of the game. So I remember when that was first being talked about, or maybe not first being talked about, but leading up into them talking about it at E3, things like that. And they were showing these clips of you flying through this planet you know, with like a jetpack on. And you would be able to land anywhere and fight some enemies. It, you know, we keep bringing up Warframe, but it's the easiest thing to compare it to. It's just like the, the Fortuna type stuff on Warframe. You fly around, you find something, you go down, you do it, and then you move on. And, and it looked really interesting and really cool. I, I don't know. Here, Man Beer Iyer has a tweet. I can't speak to any of Anthem's dev itself, but all the criticism of Frostbite, the crappiest engine I've ever worked with or 100% on point and seriously my life is so much better on Unreal now where things you know work and content creators are you know empowered and usually I get upset when people start talking about empowerment stuff like because sometimes I think it's virtue signaling and things like that yeah here I don't think that you know when we talk about empowerment of workers you, these people talk about unionizing I'm wondering if it if they need to because yeah. it's not fair to these people that they're having to work 100 hour work weeks some don't even get paid overtime some are crying in their cars because they can't even work. Mental and physical and emotional health issues. Yeah. That's not right. It's not at all. Somebody shouldn't be We should worked. be past that point now. Yeah, I thought we were past things like that. You know, people always use the excuse of 2019, man. I hate that. I hate that saying. But this is it's 2019. Look, dude, we've been working on this for so long. We've been doing these things for so long. Why are we not past this point? Yeah. Because people want money. They don't care. They don't. You know, I hesitate to make make comments about capitalism because cap, capitalism is a bad if you have moral people. We talked about that yesterday. It's the immorality. But here's it. where you start to get criticism about capitalism. Yeah. It's these larger companies taking advantage of smaller people who don't have as much power because why? They don't have as much money. And what do we see with people that, that are creators, content creators, or people that are just in the industry? They have to kiss ass. They can't give out proper reviews because they have to kiss ass and denounce themselves as what they originally were, become less genuine, and bow down to people to make money, to live. And I'm not like that. I can't do that. And maybe that's why we're struggling so much. I mean, that's... People were so angry and said all the time, they said, said another, depression and anxiety are an epidemic. So it's just constant. It's just everybody. Co-signed me a person who left Bioware in 2017 with massive depression and anxiety that had taken me a while to get through and recover from. So they had to, it was like a disease. It was. Multiple Bioware employees reportedly broke down to mental and emotional stress during development. The technical difficulties that tight deadline eventually had an impact on morale at Bioware, could talk a report. 
Members of the creative team told Schweiger anonymously that they had worked long hours to the point of exhaustion on the project, and multiple team members were forced to take stress relief to alleviate the mental pressure on working on Anthem. BioWare is now one of several video game studios, so they're not. I'm using them as an example. That's what we talked about. It's yeah. not just them. No, no. Accused of implementing crunch time management tacti tactics, which overwork employees to meet internal deadlines. One former BioWare developer told me that they would work frequently, find a private room in the office, shut the door, and just there cry. There it is, crying again. Just cry. People are, and they can't help it. They're just breaking down. Meanwhile, people in suits are going, "Do it now." Do like, it now. like, like androids. You better do it. Like, like Smith. I feel like I, it's like the Matrix. It's like some dude in a suit is standing here with a silenced pistol. You don't do it. Bring in the next guy. And no, that literally didn't happen. That's not what I'm saying. There's going to be people out there going, "What's oh, oh, that?" Is that really what happened? How Bioware's Anthem went wrong. Next article. I mean, we're not, I'm just halfway done now. It, what is it, wasn't it even supposed to be called Anthem. Oh, you need the article now. Name it. How Bioware's Anthem went wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't even supposed to be called Anthem. Just days before the annual E3 convention in June of 2017, when the studio Bioware would reveal its newest game, the plan had been go to a different title, Beyond. There, there it is, what I talked about. Yeah. They even printed out, so they printed out Beyond T-shirts for the staff. Then, less than a week before, less than a week before the Los Angeles press conference held by BioWare's parent company EA, word came down that the, the securing rights of the trademark would be too difficult. Beyond was ruled out. Wait, why? A week before? How did you not? I know would have lost before? it. A week. How did you not know? What's your legal team doing? So the legal team's just like. Oh man, that sucks. Oh man. Oh hey, by the way, guys, can't do this. New name. Yeah, we forgot to tell you. So how did they know Anthem was okay? I don't know. All you have to do is look at the copyright claim. The copyright. Uh, I can't even think oh of what it's. Oh my god. Itinerary, and you'll know if something's copyrighted or not. Beyond was ruled out. The leadership team quickly switched to one of their backup options, Anthem. At least, at least, at least their team came up with that as a fallout, as a backup. Whereas Beyond had been indicative of what Bioware had hoped the game would be, you'd go beyond the walls of your fort and into the dangerous wilds around you. Anthem didn't really mean much. No, I always wondered so why people, it was called Anthem. Yeah, people couldn't even relate the title to what the content was. Yeah. So basically, what you had with Anthem is you had a game where the the staff wasn't even behind it. They weren't even passionate about what they were making. They didn't even care. So so it was destroyed. It was destroyed from the get-go. They were having to work on a game they didn't care about. In music, as an example, do you listen to music where the singer feels like, is passionate or, or are they not passionate where it's like cookie cutter? Mm -hmm. What music do you listen to? If nowadays. A guy, if a guy, yeah. If a guy, nowadays, gets a, like a number one hit. With a cool beat in the background. Hell, the guy in the studio lyrics making the beat should be paid more lyrics than Lyrics don't matter anymore. No. They don't. People admit that, too. They don't care about the lyrics. Everybody was like, well, that, uh, it, my point is, if you're not passionate about something, it's going to suck. Yeah. Everybody was like, well, that didn't make any sense. Again, they were behind it. What does this have to do with anything? Said one person who worked on the game. Just days before their game's announcement, the team at Bioware had a brand new name that nobody really understood or cared about. Such a major last minute upheaval might seem strange to an outside observer, but on Anthem it was very common. Very few things went right in the development of Bioware's latest game. An online cooperative shooter that needs constant updates, nothing was going right. That's, a, that's well, that was first teased in mid 2012. So seven years. Spent years floundering, then just don't do it. In pre-production, many features weren't finalized or implemented until the very final months, and to some who worked on the project, it, was, it wasn't it was even clear what kind of game Anthem was until E3 demo of 2017. What? So five years being discussed, nobody knew what was going on. 2017 hits. So basically, the people in charge suck. And that, look, that when they change the name, if you get into the rest of this uh, paragraph here, it explains that they had to change stuff in the game just to fit the title of the game. It talks about them two years before it actually came out, and then they had to come up with an explanation for the name. So the game's planet was enveloped by something called the Anthem of Creation. So they even had to change that part to fit the title of the game. 
When Anthem launched in February 2019, it was panned by fans and critics. Today, it has, 50, it has a 55 on the review aggregations site Metacritic, Bioware's lowest score since the company was founded in 1995. The developer, once known for ambitious role-playing games like Dragon Age and the original like Mass Effect trilogy, has now released two critical flops in a row, following 2017's disappointment of Mass Effect Andromeda. That's that's studio drowning. That's that's studio breaking. Although hardcore fans have put their faith in Bioware to continue fixing Anthem's bugs and improving its mechanics, especially since Bungie's Destiny, a similar game, had a rough launch because again they promised all this stuff, mm -hmm. and what happened? Remember when we pre-ordered it and we thought it was going to be like the greatest thing ever? Who's the parent company on that game? Which one? Is it? It's Bungie, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Some of that's, that's what they were going to do after. That yeah, was and then they cut all this Halo. stuff. They cut all this stuff out of the game. It's going to be in development for ten years. It's going to be a ten year. No. Why didn't you give us the game you promised? Either that or just extend it out. Yeah, we don't know why people don't like our game. You, I, I have no problem with you extending a deadline out if it needs it. I have no problem with it. Just, forget what everybody else says. I don't care what they say. I'd rather have a good game. The account for Eames Anthos developments on interviews with 19 people who either worked on the game or adjacent to it. All of them are granted anonymity. So it's the, no, it's not. James, it doesn't happen. It's not real. Yeah. It doesn't. You're not imagining this. Living in a fancy world. It's a story of an indecision and mismanagement. There it is again. It's a story of technical failings. As the EA's Crossbite engine continue to make life miserable for many. So, then stop! God, EA just takes things over and ruins it. Hey, do like a bunch of suits just come in. Hey, do it this way. We tell you to do it this way, but it doesn't work. Shut up, peasant. An understaffed department struggled to serve their team's needs. It's a story of two studios, one in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and another in Austin, Texas, that grew resentful towards like one another. Like I said before, they we can't work together. This. Like I said before, we started all this. Have one. They're just one a, building, one headquarters. Yeah, they're just all over the place. They can't. They can't coordinate. It's like dice. Dice is trying to work with EA. Dice is here. He is here. Dice and the thing is, you can't blame the workers for getting mad at each it's other. It's poor management. It's, it's the management. It's Look, poor leadership. It's a story of video game that was in development for nearly seven years but didn't enter production until the final 18 months. <laughs> I'm about to just walk away from Thanks to big narrative reboots, major design overhauls, and a leadership team that led that said to be unable to provide a consistent vision and unwilling to listen to feedback. There it is. They didn't care. We said it. Like you said, just, hey, it's not working. Pat on the wall. It's not working. It's not working. We don't care. They, and I'm telling you, it's, they're not even just ignoring you. It's like they don't hear you. Just, uh, yeah. Here it is again. The story behind Mass, Mass Effect Andromeda's troubled five-year development. So we're going on the same, same issue uh, by Kotaku. God. This is by Dr Jason Schreier again. He does unbelievable articles. In 2012, as work on unbelievable investigative journalism. In 2012, as work on Mass Effect 3 came to a close, a small group of top Bioware employees huddled to talk about the next entry in the epic sci-fi franchise. Their goal, they decided, was to make a game about exploration, one that would dig into untapped potential first three games. Five years later, it's hard to find anyone ecstatic with the results Mass Effect drama released in 2017. And you know, I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't think it, it's, it's maybe as bad as people th say it is, but it's not a great game by any means. It, it was slammed for its uneven writing, frequent bugs, and meme-worthy animations. Now, I didn't get all the ones that people talked yeah, about. Yeah, I didn't get the animations in my game. But I did not. see some of the ones that some people got. Uh, some people's lips were like... I will say it got a 70% on PS4, which is what we played it on. So I'm wondering if maybe the PS4 version didn't have that stuff as much. Maybe it was maybe, the other maybe console. It was PC. Stuff. Maybe it was PC. P PC, I know, does have a lot of technical it, issues if it's not optimized. Yeah, if it's not optimized to your... Uh, uh, settings. Lower than Ian Weber, but, and I can't speak to PC particularly because I don't own a PC. Yeah, I've never played it on PC. I mean, I own a PC, but a, a laptop, but yeah. I don't play on it. Lower than any Bioware game to date, including the ill-advised Sonic Chronicles. Which was a terrible game. Mm -hmm. Almost immediately, fans asked how this happened. Why was Andromeda so much worse than its predecessors? How long were they revered RPG Studio release such an underwhel um, underwhelming game? With so many animation issues. I spent the last three months since Jason Schreier talking, investigating the answers to those questions. From conversations with nearly a dozen people who worked on Mass Effect Andromeda, all of whom spoke under condition of anonymity. Every single time. Because they weren't authorized to talk about the game, a consistent picture has emerged. The development of Andromeda was turbulent and troubled, marred by a direction change. Yet again, people came in, 
People came in and said, do it this way. Multiple major rescope. An understaffed animation team. That's the key. Oh, no. Technological challenges, communication issues, office politics, a compressed timeline, and brutal crunch. What are you doing? Office politics. About what? Many games share some of these problems, but to those who worked on it, Andromeda felt unusually difficult. This was a game with ambitious goals but limited resources. Mass Effect Andromeda was in development for five years, but most accounts by were built in the bulk of the game in less than 18 months. This was the story of what happened. And I just saw this, and it's one of the biggest... It says everything about EA and Bioware to me. EA and Bioware declined to comment for this article. You had nothing to say about it. You, you couldn't even defend yourself. I mean, you had nothing to say. Casey is the executive producer on the main trilogy would start a new team at Bioware Edmonton to work on a brand new intellectual property. Which which they gave the code name Dylan. That didn't even did that even happen? Was that supposed to be was that supposed to be uh, a, a lot of a lot of movies? Anthem? No, a lot of movies and uh, games will have like weird working titles whenever they just first start getting announced. In early conversations about 2012, a team director in Montreal brainstormed ways in which one to make Mass Effect feel distinct. This group would include several veteran Bioware employees as Hudson who wanted to help guide the project through its infancy. Had lots of fresh ideas for a new Mass Effect. There would be no Reaper threat, no Commander Shepard. They'd pick up a brand new er area of space and start over. The goal was to go back to what Mass Effect 1 promised but failed to deliver. What? Which was a game about exploration. Well, okay. I can kind of see what they're saying. I, they were limited some with Mass Effect 1 in okay, terms of exploring the, the, the They said they never tapped the full potential. Of it. Okay, you remember when I was talking to you about it way before they were even talking about it, and they were talking about things like you being able to go to a planet and, and build, build up like a... Um, like an HQ type thing. And it would be almost like a space pirate. I put that in quotes. It's not really what it would have been. But so, remember I was talking to you about all that? Yeah, it never happened. And it never happened. And it was kind of like with the Mass Effect. It was going to be like an MMO type yeah, thing. It was going to be like a, a, a kind of an MMO, but it would be single player. But it would have that style of play. One early idea was to develop a prequel to Mass Effect set during the first Contact Wars. That would have been unbelievable. Of the series lore. When the humans of Mass Effect galaxies that interact with the aliens. That, you know how cool that would have been? You, you didn't have the technology that you could have that the humans would have developed because you would have been brand new out into space. It would have been like Star Trek. Yeah. You would have had nothing. You would have that limited would have been resources. Fun. Which adds into what we were just talking about that I was telling you about. That would have made sense in that. And it would have been focused on the Turians. In that sense. Remember because the Turians were yeah, the first yeah. ones they met. Yeah. In late 2012, Hudson asked if fans would prefer a game before or after the original trilogy. The intro was resounding. People wanted a sequel, not a prequel. Okay. So, so the fans didn't want that. Fine. Yeah. They wanted a sequel. At least he went with what the fans wanted, but they didn't deliver on it. Enter pre-production in 2013. It, again, it sounded amazing, but it, it's just the same. It, you know, and it goes in... It's just a giant, long article. I'm not going to go into everything. And this little, this little one here kind of goes into what we were talking about. One of his other ideas was that there would be hundreds of explorable planets, and they would be procedurally generated, which, like, No Man's Sky is. And that's how the game would play out. So what I read a long time ago about what their plans were weren't wrong. Yeah, but that would have to be limited to a point, because all, the software can only handle so much. Well, that's why there was only going to be hundreds. I mean, they, they wouldn't be able to... It's kind of, you know, like, No Man's Sky has, you know... Okay, so just a few, number. yeah. But they would be procedurally changed. So, so when you played it, it would be the plan would be different from what but somebody I, else's. You know, to go to the point of No Man's Sky, I think the problem there was they had such a few number of people with such a large idea that they couldn't get it done in time. Yeah, now, now No Man's Sky now, in terms of the updates and stuff they've done, it's actually a really fun game. Yeah, if you go back and play No Man's Sky with the updates, the game is unbelievable. It is really fun. It, it's exactly. Does it doesn't get tedious? Yes. Yeah. But the environments are cool. The ships are cool. You get to control your own fleet. It's it is fun. It's fun. And this just goes into this goes into the next article by Polygon and the game industry is disposable workers. And here we start to get here's the overworking arching problem. The game industry is disposable workers by Polygon. Contractors of 
Co contractors are a growing portion of labor, but they have few rights. Sarah has been working for the same company on and off for three years. Her latest contract runs for a few more months. She's desperate to be offered a full-time position, but she knows this isn't likely. She's been disappointed. She's been disappointed too many times before. She reckons she'll wind up looking for another gig elsewhere. It's nothing. If nothing shows up, she'll be back here again on yet another contract. So basically, it's been. This just goes on to what we're saying about, you know, you got contract workers, and they're just disposable. They come in if they don't meet deadlines, like we talked about crunch time. Guess what they do? They contract more people, so yeah, they're just, disposable. It's, it's like it's like cattle. They come out of college thinking they want to do this, just wide-eyed, bright, bright, really, you know, really ready to take and on the world. You know, they role. play video games and stuff that they've always enjoyed, and something they want to do that they're going to like and have fun with. And then they have their passions ruined. They just don't want to live anymore. Yeah. And if that's not an exaggeration, no. It's when you not. have your passions ruined, which we have. Mm -hmm. You don't know what to do with yourself anymore. You don't. You're always upset. Yeah, you're, you're always you're sad. You're stuck. It's, it's like you're just stuck in You home. are. You're just a. You're you're dead on your feet, is what they say. Sarah few few benefits enjoyed by the people she works with. People she considers to be her friends and equals. She can't take paid vacations or sick days. Her medical coverage comes from her husband's employer. She can't be dropped. She can be dropped at any time with no compensation. Even though she's creative, she has no career pro progression path. You see this in other industries too, in terms of them hiring seasonal help or only hiring part-time workers, not hiring full-time workers. They don't want to pay them the benefits. They don't want to give them the medical insurance. Here, here, but most companies in the game industry are less willing to talk about the many contracts that they use to help get their games out of the door. According to employment agency Target CW, an estimated 10 to 50 percent of people working in the creative departments of meat of the medium and large game developers are not actual employees. 15%, about a, about a, a fifth, it's almost a quarter, they are contractors hired for short periods of time and then let go. Some contractors choose to live this way and they enjoy the freedom of variety it offers. High-end contractors can earn more than $100 an hour working from home, but most contractors work on site for an hourly rate that starts at $15. Okay, that's, that's good pay. It's not bad. $15 an hour. Depends on where they live though. They are often treated like employees but without benefits or protections according to the interviewees. Yes. Now, to that, I'm not giving this an out, but when you, you are contracted, you don't, you're not a full-time employee. Yeah. You're not given those rights. Now, it's the fact that they aren't hiring full-time positions, I think, which is... Fear and anonymity. The contractors we spoke to for this story, they are fearful about being identified as troublemakers and reluctant to talk about the press. So, so they, now they're being treated they, as whistleblowers. Yeah, because they, they're scared they won't get hired anymore for stuff. So, yeah, because they, the company might feel like if they come in, well, anything bad happens, they're going to talk about it. You know what? Maybe they should unionize. Maybe they should. You know, I've always talked about, I've talked about unions before. If unions do what they're supposed to do, they're some of the most important industries in the country. Again, if people run things in a moral way with integrity and genuine feeling, everything would be everything fine. Everything would run smooth. But oh. bad people run things. Wow, okay. Well, I, I didn't even know it said this, but speaking on this next top of this next paragraph many contractors are frustrated they can't land a full-time position I, I just I didn't even know that it said that you know I got offered a position at Dell as a contractor and they said I would work for two years and then I would have to find work somewhere else and I thought about it a while and I said let me call you back and I thought to myself I worked out the pros and cons and I thought to myself I want to work in technology here's the problem I'm a contractor, not a full-time employee. I'm not respected as much. Yeah. It's in Oklahoma City. And I called her back and I said, I want to move to Oklahoma City. How much am I paid? About 28K a year. Okay, so it'd be it'd be a little... It'd be rough, but you could do it. But you could do it, especially single. Yeah. But I said, um, what's the rate of people getting hired full-time after those two years? Well, it's not certain. Some people just don't. You never know. And I said, so I might lose my apartment after working for two years, 28K, not even paid that much, you know, based on what I'm working. So was there a chance you could be hired full-time? It was a chance, but it wasn't Now, when would they let you know that? When my contract was getting ready to end. So basically, they wouldn't give you time to go find another job. That's, 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 that's what the worst part. With. That, that's the part that makes no sense. And that's what I feel bad with these people on. How do you know 
What if there's no positions open? What do you do? You go back and live with your parents for the next couple of years until you find something new? I guess. And you just go through that rigorous yeah, process? Yeah, yeah, it's just a, a continuous... How do you develop a life? How do you develop a relationship? How do you get married? How do you have kids? Those are the stories where people start to have relationships and wives, and then they feel like failures because their wife leaves them, and they take the kids, and they take... Because they don't have a stable life. Yeah. What do they do? Yeah. How do you live? That's why we're... How do you live? Um, you don't want to work in the game, video game industry. Yeah. There are now many hundreds of millions of people playing video games. It is inevitable that many billion, millions of these are great gaming enthusiasts, and many of these want to work in video game industry. My advice, based on 30 years in and around it, don't. Here's why. This basically just sums up: playing video games is fun. It's entertainment. So you might think that making video games is fun. It isn't. No more or less than any other job, because it, it is what it is. It's just another job. Okay, fine. Now, this is by Bruce Everest, a veteran video games industry worker. So, this isn't some guy talking. Pe Next point. People working in the industry wannabes always say they want to be game designers. This is because they don't know how the game is made. In fact, there are very few game designers involved on any development team. On any development team, the main sort of people are artists of different sorts and programmers of different sorts. Okay. Being keen about video games is no qualification whatsoever for working in industry. Being a good computer programmer or artist is a much better basis. Even better is to be a very, very good at math. Which makes sense. Yeah. Because you have to work on programming. Uh, you know, oftentimes computer programmers will have math as a minor or math as their major. Yeah. Um, game companies want people with the skills to make games and being enthusiast isn't a skill. True. The competition to get into the gaming industry is fierce because there are so many wannabes. So contractors, guess what? It's a struggle. Yep. So the industry can be very, very choosy. When I was a, a Codemasters, the minimum degree to get in was a 2.1 and you had to score, score over a 130 in an IQ test? I can, I can guarantee you they weren't hiring people scoring over a 130 because there's not that many people with an IQ over 130. So that's, that's false. That's what the, I, I'm just going off of what he said. I'm not saying it, but I'm just... Because so many people... I, I understand I'll probably piss people off. But because yeah. so many people want and wages are terrible. Similarly qualified graduates go into other industries will typically earn a lot more. Okay? So, competi competition and pay. If the wages are bad when working conditions are worse, crunches widespread practice in the industry. Huge numbers of hours of unpaid overtime. There it is. Career de de advancement is typically very, very slow. This is because most of the jobs are at similar level programming, and create, creating art. The work itself is often tedious, repetitive, and boring. Job security is awful. Companies routinely get rid of people as their workflow fluctuates. The training industry jumped onto exploiting the wannabe. Lots of coll colleges and universities jumped on the bandwagon. Game companies are mainly not very well run. This is because of an immature industry and the management skills and practices, practices are just not there. It is much, much nicer working in an organization that's spelt wrong that is run properly, which you are far more likely to find outside gaming. The industry is firing, not hiring. Here it is. This is what I saw last night that was troubling to me. Lots of game studios have closed, many have shed jobs. EA alone is shedding 1,500 people. There are lots of very good, very experienced game developers can't get a job against the newbies. Don't stand a chance. So basically, if you're a contractor, you're screwed. You just keep getting fired. They hire you until the game's developed. Bye. We didn't even talk about NetherRealm Studios. Let's get into the last article that I wanted to mention. Jobs for video game developers have dropped since by 20, 65 percent since 2014. This was published in 2017, so it's two years old. Could have fluctuated, but I found this. The video game industry has experienced unprecedented success. It's been estimated that gaming will be worth over 91 billion dollars by 2020. It shocked us to learn that jobs for game developers and game designers have sh sh shown a strong decline since 2014 with a 65% drop in the number of postings. You want to look at the big game developers, top game companies that are hiring? EA. What did I say? 1,500 people that dropped? Yeah. Blizzard. Activision. Weren't you talking about those two? Yep. Epic Games. Talk about crunch time. Big four. Look at the big four. Top four. 
Aren't those the ones riddled with a bunch of problems? Look, over here, Bungie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, uh, we're doing another video today. Not going to be released today, tomorrow. It's going to be released tomorrow, but, uh, it's going to go into Blizzard, Activision and Blizzard, and, uh, how they're just, uh, not making games anymore. Except for their yearly Call of Duty title. Spitting, yeah. That's, that's another problem. Anyway. The last, this was the a last long, long point. Video. Well, the last point I want to get into. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't know why I close this, I'm not done yet. The, the problem. Too many big gaming companies in control of too many games. Yeah. They got too many irons in the fire. Mm -hmm. They got too many, you know what they want? Giant corporations. Man, this is a cash cow for us. Let's just buy all these industry, uh, companies out, yeah. force them to make games, we get profits. Is the game bad? We don't care. You know why? Here's why they don't care. EA doesn't care about what players want. Only what players will pay for says X Bioware Death. They don't care about making good games. So the game industry is in trouble right now. Whereas you got crunch time, you got people who don't care, you got poor management, you got bad uh, business practices. All of these are the problems. We talked about microtransactions. We, we talked about DLC. We kind of talked about it we, yesterday. About um, we talked about season passes. Yeah. We talked about all this stuff. You don't mean to cut you off, but I mean it's just. No, I know. No, I know what I was going to say. You know, going into other industries, look what Disney's doing. You know, as much as I love some of the, a lot of the stuff that Disney puts out, they're buying everything. They're buying it all. And they're micromanaging things. I mean, directors, movie directors, don't have the don't have the freedom they used to have to make films anymore. You know, one of my favorite film directors is George Romero. He did, like, some zombie movies and some horror movies and stuff like that back in the day. And he wouldn't work with studios. He wouldn't do it. He refused. He funded everything himself because he said that once you do that, they yeah, come in and just start changing everything. A lot of people can't do that when they're new. They see, can't. See, he, he did. He, he found a way. He worked with his friends that he had. They racked up money somehow. And then maybe we need... It, but it was easier back then is what I'm saying. It's not as easy now because mono yeah, everything's everything monopolized. Everything. Yeah, everything's monopolized now. It, you can't do that now. Here's the solution I feel. Have things like CD Projekt Red, Rockstar Games. You know, I know we just talked about them with Crunch, with Red Dead Redemption But too. they're still not as bad company-wise. No, and they really paid for overtime, and their crunch time was just three weeks before the game release. Yeah. So, yes, it sh should it happen? Do we want it to happen? No. But at least... They had time. And also with um, Rockstar, the senior management was also involved, and they yes. were also working overtime. So it's so not like they were forcing lower workers. Yes. The writers and stuff like that. But CD Project Red and stuff like that, Rockstar Games, where people have a core group, people they can rely on, people yeah. they like, they have their passion, they, they want to do this. You know, I, I, I saw a story about uh, WB, you know what they tried to make? Uh, Nether Realm. Not Nether, no. Um, CD Projekt Red. Oh, that's right, that's right, because right, they were involved. You know what? Some senior people, I don't know if it was from WB, some senior people, I'll yeah. just say that. Yeah. Tried to come in and tell them, Geralt isn't the main hero of this storyline. They stopped and went, Wait, what? No, it has to be a female. And they said, Wait, why? Well, because that's what's popular now. And they said, no, we've created our story. This is what people want. Not to mention they were basing it off of another, of, of a series of books. And, and you know what? It was pretty much based on Siri, but Geralt was the main focus. Yeah. And guess what? Did anybody have a problem with Siri? No. You know why? Because it fit with the storyline. I don't want to get into too much more because this video is long, but one thing I did see yesterday, was it was an article, and it was talking about... Some, uh, I don't know if it was like a Disney executive, but it was somebody. Ahsoka Tano from the Star Wars animated series. She's like the highest selling in terms of uh, toys and merchandise. And they said, well, we can't believe that. Well, why? 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 Because she was a well-written well character that wasn't forced into it's, the story? It's not because it's a female people. It's because it is a well-written character that people can relate to. People didn't even like her when she first came in because she was a little brat. But you know what? They grew to love her because she was amazing, it's, yeah. amazingly written and, and fleshed out in terms of story and character. You know what? I dare you. I dare you to put politics into Ahsoka Tano and see what happens to her. I saw, I saw figurines for Captain Marvel marked down already in Walmart. 
It's because people don't want. Well, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, that would make it too. What people need to it do. Was just, it was just something in terms of you know upper management, well, not, it, not understanding. It, what people need to do, I feel, is put their foot down and say, "This is what we're doing. Yeah. We're doing it this way." And this is what's right because we know our fans like it. It's sold before. This is what works. You know, sorry, parent company, but you need to listen to us. And if you don't like it, get a, go buy. Yeah, take your money and go. We're doing it this way because the fans want it this way. Yeah. You know, I know what we talked about. And that's about. not easy to do, but you, it has to be done. It has to. There's no... The game industry is suffering because of stuff like this, and it needs to stop. I mean, anyway, guys, we... We've gone on for an hour. Yeah, it's been an hour. This video is over an hour long. But there's so, a lot to talk about. So there's a lot to talk about. Um, yeah. You know, we hope you like this content. What, I'm going to get a capture card eventually, here pretty soon. Yeah. Hopefully. Soon. Yeah. Um, we want you to like. Yeah, please like and subscribe. Subscribe to us if you like the bell. content. Um, our social media is going to be down in the description below. And if you like our content to see our videos coming up, hit the notification bell. We're going to keep doing this every day. Yeah. Um, there's going to be another video up tomorrow talking about uh, various stuff. The Gaming Hall of Fame. It's going to be a little bit more positive. It, yeah, tomorrow. The, the, tomorrow's video is going to be a little bit more, uh, yeah, a couple more positive. But but there is some, there's some stuff, like I mentioned, with Blizzard and Activision that I'm going to talk about. So, uh, I guess that's it. And, uh... Hope you like this again, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. You'll have a good day. Yep.